treated DeGeneres if they saw her around the office. After the, the accusations fuck? went viral, Ellen issued a statement within the company. Hey everybody, it's Ellen. On day one of our show, I told everyone in our first meeting that the Ellen DeGeneres show would be a place of happiness. No one would ever raise their voice and everyone would be treated with respect. Obviously something changed and I'm disappointed to learn that this has not been the case. And for that, I'm sorry. Anyone who knows me knows it's the opposite of what I believed and what I hoped for our show, yet Ellen's former producer certainly didn't buy it. So when Ellen says she's not aware of this uh, environment, you don't think that rings true? It's a lie. Ellen then took a two month break and began a brand new season by addressing the public. As you may have heard, this summer there were allegations of a toxic work environment at our show. I learned that things happened here that never should have happened. I take that very seriously and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. We have made the necessary changes and today we are starting a new chapter. She'd then make the promise. How can you make the necessary change when she's on the show? I don't get it. She's the problem. And I am committed to making this the best season that we have ever had. Although the ratings said the opposite. Because only six months later, the New York Times published Ellen DeGeneres loses 1 million viewers after apologies for toxic workplace. It explained that Ellen had been averaging 1.5 million viewers over the last six months. So the, the, the main thing that happens, is, is, you guys, there's a common theme. I kind of know about this a little bit because I, I, I follow a lot of this shit. This is a common theme. When your show runs on smiles and happiness and laughs, fake laughs, of course, because it's all stripped of bullshit, right? As soon as there's a hint that it's not the perfect world, people will tank. Shit tanks. Because it's only like uh, people, that, people that watch those shows are like, oh, the, I watch this because the world is all rainbows. I want to see smiles and happiness, whatever. Like, and when that illusion breaks, it all breaks. That's the what New happens. Times it is what it is. Ellen DeGeneres loses 1 million viewers after apologies for toxic workplace. It explained that Ellen had been averaging 1.5 million viewers over the last six months, down from 2.6 million in the same period last year. The show's loss of more than a million viewers translates to a 43% decline, representing a steeper drop than any of its competitors. As a result, Ellen made the announcement. I am announcing that next season, Season 19 is going to be my last season. Adding in The Hollywood Reporter, as great as this show is, and as fun as it is, it's just not a challenge anymore. I need something new to challenge me, with her being exposed also clearly having an impact. She'd state the expose destroyed me, honestly. I'd be lying if I said it didn't. And it makes me really sad that there's so much joy out there from negativity. It's a culture now where there are just mean people, and it's so foreign to me that people get joy out of that. These mean people responded stating, even without the controversy, the show hasn't been fun and genuine for years. It may have never been, but at least it seemed like it. There but you Ellen go. is tired of it all, and she's lousy at hiding it now. No more dancing by her, no monologue half the time, bad jokes that are dragged out way too long, tons of old show clips, tons of self-promotion, and a guest host every Friday. These elements led to an average final season, which Ellen concluded by crying with her audience. She then mentioned the possibility of returning to acting, but instead made a documentary titled Saving the Gorillas Ellen's Next Adventure. It released in 2023, but with only 100 reviews on IMDb, and this likely being the first time you've heard of it, it's safe to say it performed pretty poorly. Ellen rather went back to living a quiet life until April 2024, when she'd make a new announcement. You may have heard that I'm doing stand-up again. If you want to come see me, I'll be sharing some news tomorrow at noon. As suggested, she'd announce a stand-up tour to be recorded and posted by Netflix, also adding, yes, I'm going to talk about it, referring to her being cancelled. Titled, For Your Approval, this special begins with Ellen walking up a flight of stairs, each referencing a headline that ruined her reputation. She acknowledges the tweet that started her downfall, as well as the employees who spoke out against her, then begins the actual show with a joke about her fall from grace. You know, I used to say that I didn't care what other people thought of me. And I realize now looking back, I said that at the height of my popularity. <laughs> I'm here because I love doing stand up. I miss doing stand up. Dude, and dude, I like dude, okay, okay. She's trying to humanize herself up so that people feel like they can relate it and they see the human in her. When you have 3,000 episodes of being robotic Andy or whatever, 
You're not gonna fucking get away with doing one show about human, human Andy and fucking fully recover. What the fuck is this shit? Making Hello? people happy, and I do care what people think. Now, this is a pretty respectable angle, as it feels extremely honest. Yet it also seems like a sneaky request for pity, which as a high-profile celebrity, you'll simply never get. She then talks about what she's been up to. All right, well, let me catch up on what's been going on with me since you saw me last. What are they doing? Then? Oh yeah, I got kicked out of show business. <laughs> then makes some pretty really? funny jokes about her new reputation. Everybody heard that I was mean. Everywhere I go, I know everyone's heard that I'm mean. I know when I walk into a restaurant, people are watching, waiting to see if I'll be mean. <laughs> oh look, she oh, oh she's reaching for butter. <laughs> I thought she was gonna hit somebody. <laughs> On the contrary, there are some pretty out-of-touch segments. For example, her joking about her car features, which you'd clearly only find in a luxury vehicle. Then there's that one, that, that button that inflates the back of the seat. You know, the one that makes you feel like you're getting spooned by a pregnant woman. <laughs> she also makes this out-of-touch joke. We're all interested in different things. We're all good at different things. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, Ellen, I don't know how you get on stage in front of people. I could never do that. And I said, well, I don't know how you dry clean clothes. But as an overall, the special isn't terrible. Its audience rating of 5.4 stars feels fairly accurate. What a, what a stupid... Bro, that's not, that's not, that's not even a good joke. It, it, it's just a bad comparison. Bad, it's just all bad. Though, that as you might funny. expect, simply because it's Ellen, the articles written about it have been pretty brutal. Ellen DeGeneres' unfunny Netflix special leaves so much unsaid. Ellen DeGeneres lets herself off the hook in self-indulgent Netflix special. Ellen DeGeneres is unapologetic, unrelatable, and totally insufferable in her yeah. new Netflix special. They'd write, the problem with For Your Approval, aside from the fact that it's almost never funny is that it feels so disingenuous, so calculated to rehabilitate an image and preserve that triumph for prosperity. Another article stated it's one of the weirdest stand-up shows in recent memory. Half observational punchlines, half closing argument in a trial, featuring DeGeneres as her own defense attorney. Neither half works on its own. Taken as a whole, it's an exhausting mess. That also adds self-awareness is different from taking responsibility. DeGeneres offers no apologies or even explanations for her behavior, yet in other more favorable reviews, unapologetic was used as a positive. I like the fact that she's rather unapologetic. It's highly refreshing and honest. This extreme divide can be seen by the audience reviews on Google. There's almost an April- No, that, that's what you get when you have a, um, like a loyal, very core fan base over 3,000 episodes, is that you get people that doesn't matter what she does, it's always gonna be a five, and there's the people that actually fucking watch what it is. Full amount of one and five star ratings. A sad representation of the black and white thinking that plagues the internet so heavily today. That's kind of what we're having out with, uh, I feel like, um, like Kanye West. Like a lot of people will say, oh, this is the best off the rip, like, Card like, like Playboy Cardi. This is instantly the best because it's him or whatever, and nobody actually sits down and says, okay, is there any problems with this? Oh, is this is this like creatively bankrupt? Is this bad? Is what they don't even they don't even they just fucking oh there's a new there's a new drop that was true. 